the keys are to the glory days at the stick. From who's got it better than us to brick by brick. It's always the 49ers way from off season to game day. Yeah, we talk back. It's the 49ers cut back. It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time, and it's time to talk about defensive line again because Eric Armstead needs to show out this year, and I think it's his time to shine. And you know what else? I think people are uh, discounting this man. I've heard the the conversations. I've heard the things you said. Buckner. Buckner. We want Buckner. This is stupid. Give us Buckner. I do like Buckner. I mean, listen, I love Buckner too, but... What's done is done, folks. Faithful. It happened. We dealt Buckner. This guy can get it done. This guy has the potential to blow up and have a huge 2021 season. And we're not just going to talk about it. We're going to show you how. Because Eric Armstead is a very special talent. He just has to be utilized the correct way. And he wasn't able to be utilized properly in 2020 due to all the injuries. Yeah, he wasn't. He had to play more base, you know, 4-3 defensive end. And even on obvious pass you know, downs, he played outside. And that's not really where he's the most successful. Where he's the most successful is in, you know, the early downs and late downs when it's obvious pass downs. Being able to get him inside and letting him work against offensive guards, that's where he has the most success. He's able to use his tremendous length to get extension, also to just push guards back into the quarterback. Yeah, a lot of the film was going to show kind of the things that he does well. He was hampered and hurt by not having Bosa, not having Ford, not having these guys. The emergence of Kinlaw going with Bosa coming back, Ebucom, D Ford. These guys on the outside is going to be a re-emergence of him because he was taking on double teams and doing things that a big-time player does in this league. And when you free him up and he's one-on-one, he's hard to stop. So his production is going to go up for sure. And just like with anyone, if you would have taken stripped down the entire defensive line besides you're the one player left, you're always going to struggle a little bit more when you have these other pieces. If it would have been just Bosa, he would have struggled. If it would have been just Ford, he would have struggled. That is just how it goes. Adding these pieces now makes him prime to have a big season. Well, listen, Aaron Donald was a monster before yep. he had all the help. But it wasn't until Aaron Donald started to get some of the help and the pieces around him and having a lockdown corner on the outside that gives him a little more time to fight through those double teams to get to quarterbacks, that's when he started to break out and shine. It was like, oh my God, no, no. Aaron Donald isn't just great. He's Hall of Fame level, generational type oh, talent yeah. great on that D-line. Everyone thought he was really, really good, if not a great, one of the great defensive linemen, the defensive linemen in the league. But once he got the help around him, then it's able to spotlight him. Yep. Because there's you can't just send double teams at him all the time because there's too many other things around him to help. And listen, Eric Armstead, he has the speed, especially on the inside. When this guy on obvious pass downs can play inside or yep. can do things like this where he's stunning around inside and coming at the quarterback, in space, he's able to use his speed and his length to his advantage against some of these smaller guards and centers in the league. He can eat them for lunch. Yeah, I mean, he he came out. He was a you know a five technique coming out of college. Mm-hmm. That's what he did. He was built for the three or for the three four defense. And the 49ers have you know kind of moved him around. And when him and when Ford and Bosa were out there, and you had Buck and him at defensive tackle on obvious pass downs, that was kind of the roughest thing. He is a very good run defender, both on the edge and inside. So mm-hmm. he's somebody that can be successful there. If you have somebody show up in a big way that can play the outside, I think we worry about Ebucom setting the edge. Sure. If he's able to and you're able to move him inside more, that is great. But definitely on third down, him playing inside going against these guards is wonderful. You see it on all these plays. When he gets to go against a guard, he makes a lot of good plays. Um, this is him just working, 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 and battling to get there. No, and this is what we need him to do, right? When you have the speed on the edge in Bosa and Ford that can get around Ebukam, who can get around and bend that corner and force a quarterback to have to step up like Mr. Allen does here, the minute he steps up, as long as your inside interior pass rush is creating pressure and keeping those lanes small, he's quick enough to be able to, even if they try and step out, he can get a hand on him in space and slow him down, even if it's just a little bit, or if they're trying to make an off-balance, off-platform type throw, again, Make that throw 10 times harder by getting a hand in his face, taking him to the ground while he's going down. This is where Eric Armstead can shine. Um, you putting him one-on-one in space with these guards, he shows you right here on all of these clips. He's going to get his hands on you if it's a bull rush. He's going to get his hands on you, get separation, and be able to shed and get to the quarterback. Or if it's a move, he's too quick in space. Hand placement is very solid. He can get around these guys in space. Elite guards, one-on-one, of course. He's going to yeah. win some. He's going to lose some. But... How many elite guards are there in the league? 
Yeah. It's a handful. Well, and they're showing double A blitz right here. You know, and look at look at the way they adjusted. And then he's just going to completely dominate the center. Mm -hmm. Well, and that was the situation, too. They, they showed double A blitz, and you you walked Tart down on the outside. Yeah. So the guard and tackle both communicate pre-snap on that play to kick slide out to pick up just in case, which means your center has to shift over and pick up the odd man out, which is Armstead. That's just a hard angle to make that block. And Armstead takes the right lane, the yeah. right angle at that center, Bull rush, blows up inside, gets him to open up and turn his hips. And now all you have to do, shed, rip through, get right to the quarterback. It's easy. He can do that every day of the week. And again, when the pieces are healthy, you can show things like that. You can be creative and make it really, really hard for a defense or an offense, excuse me, in the offensive line and the quarterback to predict where the rush and where the pressure is coming from. Yeah, every time you add a piece, it makes something easier for someone else. You know, and, and like even if... Like with Nick Bosa, he's going to be more successful once you have D Ford or Ebucom causing pressure on the outside. Without that, he's going to see double teams. So every time you add somebody and somebody plays well, it makes it easier for everyone else. You get more one-on-one -on -one opportunities. That is where Eric Armstead had the most success in 2019. That is where he'll be elite when he has one-on-one -on -one opportunities against right tackles and guards, especially guards on the inside. He will dominate because he has very good technique, very good leverage, good strength in his hands. When he gets you, his hands on you, you're in trouble. And he has the athletic ability like you brought up to get out and make sure he can keep these guys in the pocket. But he does a lot of good things. And I think he slept on a little bit because yes, Buckner was a better pass rusher. That is 100% accurate. True. Armstead's better against the run than Buckner was. Um, but I think that really the 49ers are going to be better off with Armstead right now because he can play the 4-3 edge, you know, defensive end and uh, on obvious rundowns and then on obvious pass down slide inside where Buck was more an inside player consistently. Correct. He's more he's more flexible. You can utilize him in different ways. And yeah. I think that was the direction they wanted to take that D line. They wanted more guys who are utility pieces that you can move around and do different things with than they were with a guy who's set in a certain role and can do certain types of things. Don't get me wrong. I would have loved to have kept Buckner. 100%. Everybody would have loved to have kept, kept Buckner. But there was going to have to be some sort of casualty on that D-line. They went with the guy who fits more pieces and they can do more things with than the guy who was maybe a little more dominant in one area of the game. Because, if you're again, if you if you have pieces that you can do more things with, you can recreate some of the pressure that Buckner was able to generate on pass rushes in a variety of different ways. Being more creative, yeah. blitz packages, just different matchups and formulas in terms of putting players in positions to have success. That's what Eric Armstead brings to the table. He makes the equation, it is not, it's not two plus two equals four, or in this case, rush plus rush equals sack. Right? Speed on the edge, power on the inside equals sack. It can be speed on the edge. It can be speed on the edge with power on the inside. Yeah. It can be overloading one side of the field entirely, putting three guys on one side. I mean, they showed that in one of these clips on here in the in, from the 2019 season where you had Ford, Bosa, and Armstead literally on one side of the yeah. line, and there's just nothing, nothing that O-line can do other than just hope and pray that it, they don't beat you quick enough to get to your quarterback before he's able, even able to make his first read. And in that scenario, in that clip, they do. And Eric Armstead blows right by the guard and is able to get at the quarterback and create a sack in space uh, in a very quick amount of time. It's just hard. It's hard for them yeah. to have success when you have that much talent on the D-line and this talent, that this team has that kind of talent. You have to deal with the talent that you're you're dealt, right? It's just like a card, you know, a set of cards. If you get four kings, you know what you got. Um, and you have, somebody's in trouble. You got four kings. But if you start losing those kings, guess what? All of a sudden it's two pair, then it's, you're all by yourself. He was he was a one king by himself. You know what I mean? He was just sitting there all by himself last year. It's king, king high with uh, with some sixes. Well, and that's why Hyder, you know, Hyder was able to get the production because Eric Armstead ate up all the double teams. That's Eric awesome. Armstead... You know, was the the guy that was getting the most attention, and guess what? He's not going to be getting that attention again, which means the production is going to go up. This guy's hand placement is still some of the better, you know, that there is. Chris Kacerik is going to be able to use these guys, manipulate them, and I think it's going to be closer, um, closer to 2019 production from Eric Armstead than we saw last year for sure. Um, I, I appreciate what he did for the team, you know, taking one for the team and playing roles that maybe didn't fit. His skill set the best, but he did it to the best of his ability, and they played well still, and he played well. It wasn't like a grand number year, but overall play from, from down to down was very good, and that's why he's poised to have another big year. No, I agree with you there. Uh, listen, Eric Armstead, the things he brings to the table, the things he does for this defensive line is is something that you know we need. We yeah. need that flexibility. We need that utility. We need to be able to plug and play guys in different situations. 
Um, we need to be able to mix it up because you're not always going to have D Ford on the field. You're sure. going to want to keep Bosa healthy at the beginning of the beginning of the year. You don't want to overload Javon Kinlaw either because you want him to be fresh. Um, and we got a lot of different talent. You brought in the Zach Kurz, you brought in the Maurice Hurst, the Arden Keys, right? You added all these pieces. You added Samson, Ebicom. You added all these other tools now. You need a guy who can play inside, can play outside. You can move these guys into different areas. Eric Armstead allows for that. And because he allows for that, that means they can put him in whatever situations they need to put him in this, this upcoming season to have the most success possible for this D-line to thrive. And if this D-line is thriving, the defense is thriving. And if this defense is thriving and eating, like it was in 2019, Jimmy G and this offense are going to have no excuses but to put up record gaudy numbers on offense. Yeah, I mean, these guys are going to be, it's going to be nuts because they have legit players on that front, you know, defensive line that are just going to be great. The fact that you could have Armstead at times being your fourth best pass rusher um, just shows how good, you know, they are. He's a, he can be a 10 sack a season guy, um, especially on a team that has that much talent. Bosa, Ford, Ebicom. Kinlaw, DJ Jones are going to get a lot of attention when they're out there, and he's going to he's going to garner attention, but not like Bosa and Ford, especially no. if Ford is healthy. And the production I think we're going to get from Ebucom playing opposite of Nick Bosa at first. I think early on Armstead will get attention, but as the season goes on, he'll get less and less, and then he'll he'll perform higher and higher, and he's going to have a lot of big time plays. I look forward to seeing what they do with them because I think there will be more creativity in D'Amico Ryan's defense, and I think that will extend also to the defensive line. Look for more stunts like they did against Dallas, ways to confuse the offensive line and make it less you know, likely that you can figure out what they're doing. I think if you can't figure out what these guys are doing, where they're coming from, that's when it really gets scary. Elite talent doing elite things, um, that's when it's bad for everyone else. If that happens, not only will this defense be one of the best in the league, um, they will be right in the thick of being the best team in the NFL. It's very true. It's very true indeed. Let us know what you think down below right now. Do you agree with us? Or are you fully on the Buckner bandwagon and this guy, Eric Armstead, needs to go? We need to find a way to get Defoe back today. We want to hear from you. Let us know about it down below in the comments section. If he is primed for a breakout too, I want a sack number from you. How many sacks is this guy getting in 2021? Uh, you know, what kind of impact is he going to have in this D-line? We love having this conversation. That's why we put out this content. That's why we put out these videos. We want to hear from you. And while you're down there, don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to share it with everybody that you know. And hit that subscribe button. Help us get to 1K today. We're so, so close. We're going to have a nice celebration once we do. Yeah. Man, this is an exciting time for 49ers fans. It's exciting because there's all these possibilities that's going on. Um, just the fact that Armstead looks like he's going to have a bounce back year, just from everything that we're seeing as far as the health, what he looks like. He looks like, I mean, just a straight beast. Um, he, he looks like he's ready to go. This defensive line looks like they're ready to go. I know I'm ready to go. I can't wait. And I'm excited about this team and where everything is headed. Just can't wait. Hurry up and get here season. I want to see these guys on the field. Let's go. Let's go. Can, 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 can get to the season. Let's get to the season as soon as humanly possible. Man, we can't wait to cover games. We can't wait to talk more 49ers football with all of you. And until then, 49ers fans, you stay safe. And remember the right way is always the 49ers way.